Okay, what is good? Welcome back. Um, today is going to be an Affliction Warlock Gold Making Guide. Um, I think that Affliction is actually one of the best classes for farming gold. At least in the in the way that I'm doing it now, where you're just kind of farming raw materials. It just has so much sustain and does really good damage even with no gear. But yeah, first things first, what I usually do, I usually pay someone, I'll pay like 20 gold to go get a King's buff. If you think about your stats and stuff, it's going to greatly improve um, not only your damage, but just your survivability uh, when it comes to getting an extra little buff. And it's, it usually, I only pay like 20 gold or whatever, but it's the first thing I do whenever I start farming. But yeah, getting into the actual uh, guide. So first off, you don't need any gear. I'm gonna showcase that by not wearing like half of my gear, basically. Um, you don't need any chance, you don't need anything as an affliction lock. Uh, it's just kind of a busted class. Another thing to note is that you don't really, you don't need near as much hit rating uh, because most of the mobs, it, not only are they gonna be your level, but they're not going to be boss mobs. Um, so if you only have like a hundred hit rating, I mean, you can do this. If you don't have enchants, if you have crap gear, you can do this. Um, I usually do this on a fresh server uh, where everybody's kind of competing and uh, going for either realm first professions or realm first level 80 and stuff. This is usually my go-to spot. Um, Depending on how bad or how good the respawns are on Wrath Classic, this will be pretty decent for it. You know, with all the different layers and stuff, it might be uh, one of the best strategies. But yeah, usually what I do. Yeah, let's get into everything. So this is your talents. Um, again, you don't need every point in this. It's not a normal affliction. Um... Like this isn't ra you're not raiding you're you're just trying to put out max amount of damage you have you're hitting mobs that are the same level as you you don't need this talent so yeah what I usually do is I, I instead I go for the fell concentration you don't want to skip this um, you can skip this if you have decent gear like if you're watching this video and it's like tier 10 or something that you can skip this I think it becomes a useless talent around 800 haste or something like that. I think that this talent becomes useless um, But yeah, you can spec into this which gives you some mana back, but it's kind of it's usually not even worth the global Usually you're just gonna want a life tap. So maybe fill out this uh, But yeah continuing down I usually go into improve range this talent's actually super nice whenever you're farming uh, especially with uh, my spots um, You can't skip this talent. This is too good never skip this talent you can skip this this talent though this talent is only applied really from your haunt because you're not going to be shadow bolting that much um instead of this talent you could even go you could go one or two points here um the the reason that i don't usually spec into this first off it has a terrible proc chance but nightfall is generally or not nightfall but shadow bolt is generally super high mana consumption and it's not gonna do a lot of damage overall because with this spec you're not gonna go into the destro tree so you don't have ruin you don't have any of the other stuff that makes shadow bolt really good um so yeah i usually skip that talent and uh you could pick up you could even pick up exhaustion to be honest but generally i pick up um this talent and maybe one point in nightfall. But yeah, continuing down, you don't skip this talent. Your fell hunter actually does a ton of damage whenever you're farming. Um, if you look at your uh, overall damage, it's generally it's it's pretty high. It's like 20% or something like that just from your fell hunter. Um, but yeah, the rest of these talents, I wouldn't skip any of these. Um, these talents are really good even haunt haunt is a good heal um you're not going to be haunting a lot but um it's just too good to pass up really um but yeah don't skip the rest of these talents uh going moving on uh you go into the demonology tree 
Uh, this is going to give you a little more survivability. And it's also going to be more damage because, again, you're not really shadow bolting with this build. Um, you're kind of just putting up a couple dots and moving. So, yeah, this is what I do. I make sure my pet is getting healed because I'm going to have Soul Link up. Um, so he's going to be taking a little damage that I'm taking. So you want to make sure that he just doesn't fall over. Make sure you pick this up. This is going to give you, again, more health and whatnot. This doesn't really matter. You don't really need the best health stone. You can pick up uh, improved health funnel if you want. Generally, if I'm farming, though, I can usually this talent is enough and I can just pick up a health stone for myself and I don't need to health funnel that often. But there are times if I pull an elite or something like that. I kind of wish that I had this, but yeah, I usually spec like this. Uh, anyway, moving down. Uh, so yeah, definitely make sure you pick up Soul Link. It's it's super good, especially with this. It essentially makes it to where you you take substantially less damage because it's all being healed by your pet. Uh, this is going to give you like 80 spell power or something like that. Don't skip it. You're definitely going to want this if your pet ever dies. Uh, you need to be quick with resummoning and re-soul linking. And then, again, this talent is going to give you pretty decent damage. It's going to be 4% Fellhunter Hunter damage. You could take that talent out and go spec into Nightfall, but I generally just keep it like this. Uh, moving on to the Glyphs. So your Glyphs are going to be your Life Tap. You're basically, basically going to have 100% uptime on this, so you don't want to skip this. Always pick up the Drain Soul one. Um, but it kind of doesn't matter for farming actually. So you're, you're going to want this for everything else, but it's, you don't really need this for farming. Um, and then this is the talent that is super good that you're going to want to trade out, uh, your glyph of haunt for, uh, you definitely want to keep siphon life instead. And if you look at your talent, it's going to be, what is that? 75%. So basically all the corruption damage that you're doing is going to heal you for a shit ton. Um, that's what makes it, that's what makes affliction so good in general is uh, just your, your sustain. And then even if you have low haste rating, I would definitely pick this up. Um, there's really no other glyph that I would put in, a, in its spot. Uh, but yeah, that's glyphs and talents. Now for the actual farming spots, uh, this is going to be spot number one. This is where you're you're going to repair. Get out of the way. Um, you're gonna repair this dude. You're gonna vendor all your crap. Make sure you don't have a full bag of garbage before you start farming. Um, and again, make sure you have King's buff because that's gonna help you a lot. Um, if you're a chef and you have like some extra food on you, again, th these are all just little things that are gonna make your farming much faster. I would even. Um, if you have like a second pair of boots where you have, uh, you can put either minor speed on it, which is like a 10 gold enchant, or you can just, uh, you can keep rocket boots, but I, I recommend um, just having an, a, a passive 8% movement speed enchant instead in this spot. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to have no gear on, basically. Just to showcase that I don't need um, gear to do this. Um, and I, at this point, I'm basically in quest greens. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Let's take that off, too. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, anyway. So this is how I farm. Um, so all I'm doing is putting up two dots and moving um, again you want to make sure that you are using your cooldowns um, got all your things right here oh, come on okay so usually uh, the mobs don't die that quickly and they'll all group up here um, once they're grouped up here I, I hit my hellfire or once once you have tagged all of them with corruption Again, corruption is healing you, so you make sure that corruption's on everything. Um, I usually take them around the corner here. Um, 
you can't you can put up your your summons thing but um you know if you're gonna be here for any substantial amount of time you're just gonna forget to be honest um this only lasts what five minutes or whatever yeah so um but yeah once you have aggroed all of them you have corruption on all of them you're not gonna die just use hellfire and boom all the mobs are dead usually they're all dead right next to right in the same spot um so yeah this is part one of this spot and then usually when you come here <clears throat> if you're all alone there's literally like 30 mobs here um and again all you do is you're doing this it looks like they're respawning so put up your two dots I really hope more spawn. I'll just keep pulling stuff. But yeah, I don't I don't know how the layer system and stuff is gonna work in classic. Um, ideally, you're not farming here with literally everybody. Um, usually, other people don't even do this farming strategy. Um, so hopefully, you can have this spot to yourself. But usually, there's like 20 mobs here, like I said, and you would just corruption all of them. Uh, maybe throw an agony on a couple of them and then you would come around the corner and you would just hellfire and then it, all of them would die you can literally do this with 30 mobs and you'll be completely fine okay so this is just to showcase like uh how you don't need any gear to be really busted on an affliction lock and, and farm um so again i don't have any freaking gear i just wasted my trinket <laughs> But yeah, I don't have any gear on, um, and I'm about to pull a ton of stuff. Again, all I'm doing here is putting up corruption um, and moving. That's it. And I just pulled like, you know, a million mobs or whatever. Um, and as you can see, I'm hell firing and boom. I loot everything. Um, again, don't farm here, but this is just showing like, you know, afflictions kind of busted. Okay, so this is gonna be the second spot. Um, this is, these are called Murlocs. <laughs> Winterfin Murlocs or whatever. Um, again, in this spot, you can actually go substantially less hit rating here, um, cause these are all level 70. Um, but yeah, just corruption everything, hellfire it down, boom, I just killed five mobs. Um, and what you're hoping for here is, uh, did I get it? No. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, so what you're hoping for is... And there's a ton of murlocs around this area. Um, there's usually... There's just a ton of spawns um, all over this place. It's going to be completely full. But as you can see, there's a couple little monkeys stealing my farm idea. Um, but yeah, hop around on layers and stuff. Check this area out. Um, but I want to show you what you're actually farming for um so you're farming for something that's called siren's tear um it's a thing that's used for dude get out of the freaking way oh my god it might actually be spawning soon dude oh my god i hate when people do this get out of the freaking way okay there we go <laughs> all right so um on this vendor you are able to buy what's called Siren's Tear. Um, it'll cost a hundred of these little clams. Um, so again, depending on drop rate and all that stuff for classic, um, this might be on the vendor. And that Siren's Tear is literally, it, it'll probably be like worth th at least a thousand gold, I would assume on classic. Um, generally on private servers, it's around a thousand, maybe 500-ish. But yeah, especially on, on fresh or like uh, early on the server, people are gonna need it for their their death chill cloak and all sorts of stuff. Um, and then on top of that, when you're farming in this area, um, you're you're getting greens and stuff. You're getting all sorts of stuff that you can sell at that vendor. Um, but yeah, with the sirens tier, um, the way it works, you're gonna have to wow head the exact timer, but um, 
it only spawns one of them for like once every two and a half hours or something like that um so yeah you're you you would have to sit there for a little bit if you actually want to buy the sirens tier most of the gold actually comes from just the raw stuff that drops um but the sirens tier is a decent uh pickup and again usually i this is my second spot if the first spot is super full okay so this is the last spot um that i usually farm at um i think that this will actually be one of the best spots just because um for wrath classic your relics of ulduar is what they're called i'll type it relics of ulduar um those will actually be worth something because um they're going to be used for uh sons of hodir rep and they're tradable so um and you get a ton of them here um so yeah the way you get here if you're looking at the map i'm right here um you go through this little cave and what you're wanting to kill are actually these dudes they're called captive something captain captive fry cruel and exhausted fry cool um so again you do this the exact same way that you would do every other farm uh just put corruption on everything again make sure you're using your trinkets make sure you're, if you have engineering or whatever you're using that and then shadow flame okay so once they die relic of ulduar that's what they're actually called um so again, this drops a ton of cloth. It drops a ton of um, these little relics. It's actually one of the best places to farm these. Um, but yeah, they're pretty, they're plentiful in this area. Um, and again, you're not gonna die because you're a busted class. And um, yeah. Um, if I were to guess, usually on private servers, um, they have the cloth. Um, they have cloth prices really high, but you know, they also drop a lot of extra stuff on private servers. If I were to guess, this is probably at least 1500 gold an hour. If you're uncontested, if you don't have anybody else in this area farming with you, um, this is gonna be a massive spot. Um, so again, if you were watching where I was just going, it was that area. If you're looking top right on my, my thing, and then it's here and then it, is over here has a few of them um and this is even decent gold even if you're like sharing it with a couple other people but i make a ton of gold out here um so yeah let's kill this and then i'll show you i'm not even gonna loot these um i'll show you the last spot so again it was here 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 and then the last spot is gonna be um up here to the left um and i'm pretty sure you don't need let me make sure sons of hodir rep do i have that no i don't okay good so yeah you don't need any reputation or anything for this um and then this is the last spot where all the little fried cool are um but yeah if you're looking for max sons of hodir rep if you're looking for gold um this is a super good spot So yeah, that's my entire gold guide. Um, obviously, if you do other things like with the auction house and whatnot, um, those are going to be better. I would imagine that doing a GDKP where they have you know 15k, 20k splits or whatever, that's also going to be much better. But when it's like the first little bit of the the server when everybody's still level 80 and or still trying to get to level 80, whenever people are. Uh, there's really not that much cloth on the auction house or whatever, and you're just trying to finish off your professions. Um, I usually use these spots to uh, stay ahead of the of the curve, really. Um, and yeah, you're gonna get tons of so sons of Hodier rep. You're gonna get tons of gold. But yeah, that's my guide. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.